What started out as a routine space weather check was so much more. Larry Paxson, a physicist, found something unusual on the map. This discovery would later change the lives of millions, even after a year. On his scan, he discovers parts of the map had gone dark, and UV lights were absorbed by molecules. After much research, the results became clear. It was the Tonga Honga Haapai volcano. What was his discovery? Stay with us till the end of the video to find out. The terrible eruption at Honga Tonga started in December 2021. Over time, the outcome became uncontained. In four weeks, the volcanic water eruption continued to rise to its peak and finally had a climax on January 15, 2022. A year after this terrible occurrence, scientists have yet to understand the full details of what triggered the eruption. Some of the results from the ocean and the ionosphere studies have been truly astonishing. The aftermath of the eruption, however, is another story. From recent discovery, the erupted underwater volcano triggered what could be a hard battle against a deadly hazard. The two tsunamis, classic and medio tsunamis, were caused by a forceful rush of large water volumes and the fast pressure disturbance movements in the atmosphere. That is not all. The new observation of scientists reported that new vibration waves moving across the globe also contribute to tsunamis occurring in distant rivers and ocean basins. The blast of the eruption plummeted about 33 miles in height and pumped roughly about 322 billion pounds of water into the stratosphere. Unfortunately, the effect of this eruption would cause a strain on the ozone layer for a decade or more. NASA, after the eruption, immediately began research and observation of the atmosphere's water content and changes in the existence of sulfur dioxide. The gravity waves of the ocean so far have not been helping matters. As they move along the air-water boundary, they said pressure to the air mass density, causing turbulence in the waters. The effect of the violent eruption is no short than tragic. The eruption swept through Tonga Islands, destroying buildings and structures and forcibly migrating about 1,500 people from their homes. It does not end there. Deaths were also reported to be caused by the eruption. About four people lost their lives and two people in the Pacific. There was also significant oil spillage into the water bodies in Peru, Chile, Japan, Russia, New Zealand, Hawaii, and Fiji. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your opinion, the eruption did not cause more harm than it could, thanks to the preparation and measures of neighboring countries in curbing tsunamis. The shocking occurrences of the eruption have led to many more discoveries of new volcano types and underwater threats. Just like past eruptions, although the eruptions can be predicted, the outcome effect is always more than what is bargained for. The previous eruptions, though, have strong bearings and are of little to no match of the eruption of Honga Tonga. However, scientists have a fair advantage. Unlike many volcanic eruptions, scientists have the means and opportunity to study and research underwater volcanic eruptions. In hindsight, the mystery behind the eruption will unfold one after the other. To mention a few, underwater volcanoes such as Hickam Jenny, Kavachi, and Axial Seamount. Many more undiscovered underwater volcanoes are being triggered and brought to light. However, whether or not they are accessible for extensive study is still a probability. There are a number of newly discovered arcs of volcanoes in the Pacific, around large cities and harbors. It is no news that many of the world's volcanoes are located on the edges of the Pacific Ocean. The west coast of America, the east coast of Siberia, Japan, the Philippines, and Indonesia, and the island chains from New Guinea to New Zealand. From research on glass plate tectonics, it is very accurate to state that volcanoes erupt mostly at the edge of large plates. There are several island neighbors close to submarine volcanoes. Tonga is made up of about 170 islands and a new addition. As reported by Tonga Geographical Services, a new island about 50 feet above sea level appeared and it was caused by seismic activity and venting. The numerous amount of islands in Tonga itself is a trigger for volcanic eruptions. Despite being aware of the risks, small islands like Tonga have no means of seismic monitoring, researching, and establishing volcanic monitoring programs. 
This is due to Tonga's geographical and population problems. With a population close to one of the world's highest, there are few to no funds to foster geographical concerns. In early research reports, scientists unveiled something not originally thought to happen. From discovery, the tsunamis were not the only hazard triggered by the eruption. About 25,500 lightning were triggered in just five minutes. Over six hours, the volcano triggered over 400,000 lightning. This is an alarming amount compared to the past volcanic eruptions that have been triggered. The Hunga Tonga eruption was an unfortunate record breaker. It was the most extreme case of triggering lightning to ever be recorded. According to Visela, U.S. National Lightning Detection Network NLDN, it was the largest recorded in over 100 years, and its effect produced global tsunamis that caused damage to not only Tonga, but other Pacific states. Over the years, researchers have used lightning to indicate an ongoing climate crisis or temperature warming. Using this indicator, several known historical eruptions that occurred have been predicted, such as in 1912, 1937, 1988, 2009, 2014, 2015, and most recently, 2021 and 2022. Using these records, it can be seen that the Honga Tonga eruption has a repetitive history, which cannot be good for Tongo Island's environs. On December 20th, 2021, there was a volcanic eruption. However, the eruption continued until 2 a.m. on December 21st, 2021. It lasted hours, and although the activities were significantly low compared to the starting point, it was only declared dormant on January 11th, 2021. However, unfortunately, the volcano activities restarted on January 14th, 2021, with little to no warning spitting out an ash cloud. The reactive volcano has a much more powerful strength than the previous one, which ended only a few days before. It was almost seven times more powerful than the previous, and unfortunately was also a record breaker. The volcanic plumes rose to about 36 miles in the mesosphere. It was both a marvel and a concern for scientists. The results was a massive atmospheric shockwave traveling at an alarming rate of about 300 meters per second. January 14, 2022, Hunga Tonga Hunga Pai eruption sent a never recorded amount of water vapor into the stratosphere. The tsunamis provided by the eruption were out of this world. The eruption triggered tsunami waves of up to 15 meters which struck the west coast of Tonga Tapu, Eva, and Haapai. The last of its kind was in Krakatoa in 1883. There was spread ash falling five square kilometers in the surrounding areas. There was a declaration of a state of emergency in Tonga on January 16, 2022, as soon as the tsunamis became extreme. Although international aid and assistance were requested, not much of the information was reported or run down by Tongo mass communication organizations, but by New Zealand Defence Force and Australian Defence Force's surveillance flights. This was due to the damage to international and domestic undersea telecommunications. For countries like Australia, volcanic eruptions might amount to a positive outcome for the next decade. According to reports, Australia will experience cool temperatures and rainy weather for the next decade. Western and Northern Australia might have had a much-needed breakthrough in its weather and climate. However, more is needed for conclusive results. Similarly, according to Dr. Tucker from the University of New South Wales Climate Change Research Centre, southeastern Australia should experience increased rainfall during the summer for the next few years. His theory is based on past research on the southern annular mode. Hopefully, by theory, these strong volcanic eruptions would have a cooling effect on global weather and climate conditions. Many scientists know the research and change in atmospheric activities offered by the Honga Tonga volcano. There is a better chance of understanding and predicting the weather and making technological improvements to climate monitors. According to Matthew Barrow, a faculty member at UMass Lowe's Climate Change Initiative, he stated that the types of discovered explosion will play a significant invaluable role in upgrading computer models for weather forecasting and climate projections. The affected country's unsteady fate. As mentioned earlier, not only Tonga Islands bear the burden of the eruption. The effect has been shared with its neighboring countries and does not look good. 
About 84% of Tonga's total population of 106,000 are deeply affected, especially due to the destruction of their houses and properties, leading to mass displacement. The five mainly affected countries, Fiji, Japan, Peru, Samoa, and Tonga itself, are still recovering and reformatting. In Fiji, the volcanic eruption was considered an unexplained heightened war. Over 60% of the population was left homeless and displaced while the soil was forcibly eroded. Fortunately, the people of Fiji had clean fun and tried to manage what was left of the situation before help came. To prevent being victims from such a terrible hazard in the future, the government established the Fiji National Disaster Risk Reduction 2018-2030. The plan is based on the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. In Japan, the essential water source was destroyed, as were the sanitation and hygiene facilities, which will cost billions of dollars to reconstruct. Also, usual labor, education, and production activities have been put on hold to address the pressing issue. Healthcare centers are in emergency mode, and access to basic medical needs is limited, increasing the risk of infection improper waste disposal, unhealthy water supply, and unbearable environmental conditions. In Peru, the eruption's most devastating effect is the country's worst affected marine life. Due to the excess oil spillage from a damaged oil tanker, about 264,000 gallons were mixed with the coastline, spreading dark, slimy oil across the country's waters. The aquatic animals and water supply are in danger. From a broader perspective, the means of limited livelihood, exportation, and risk of infections have been heightened. In the eruption's heat, two women lost their lives from being unaware of the dangerous waves coming to the beach waters. Despite all the unfortunate losses, international organizations and countries' response to aid Tonga Island has been impressive so far. The commendable first action taken by New Zealand and Australia is sending aircraft and surveillance for damage assessment and to gauge rescue requirements. A few days after the occurrence, both countries provided aid by providing water, good supplies, health care, medical assistance, communication aids, and power generators. It was a whirlwind of several emergency services. There was also a distribution of services based on Tonga's least and most affected regions. The Global Red Cross Society, Tonga's Red Cross, the Austrian medical NGOs were the power source of medical operations. In recent aids, the Australian government was reported to have pledged about $3 million for humanitarian aid in Tonga. In addition, more than 40 tons of emergency relief supplies were given. There has also been relief assistance from other countries such as France and the activation of the 1992 Agreement for Pacific Countries. The Australian Defence Force ADF, has also been an active contributor towards minimizing and managing the outcome of the hazard especially through establishing humanitarian and disaster relief HADR, to aid in maintaining and delivering emergency supplies to Tonga. The response should improve in the coming months. Can Tonga recover from the damages done? And is another eruption lurking in later years? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and click the notification button for updates on new videos.